Hello all my lovely internet peoples and welcome to the first video in our story time with mom series reading through the hive book of sorrows. This book is a hive history though in some cases fictionalized which was compiled by Oryx the Taken King. The book is quite long so we'll be taking it in bite-sized chunks but don't worry if you don't have a lot of time you can jump back in at any point to listen to any chapters you may have missed. So sit back, grab something to drink or eat, pull up a comfy chair, and let's do the thing. What is this violent ritual? These tales of suffering where all ends in a feast of maggots and rot on a wormwood table for gods to feast on misery. But is not the light also served by savage sacrifice Accepted wounds, blood spilled on the dust of different worlds. Life and death and life and death and life and death are locked in a battle that never ends. The cycle is the same. The pain is the same. We eliminate those who oppose the light. They annihilate those who do not worship the dark. In the end, only sorrow remains. Dearest sister, it's taken me two years, a quarter of our lives, but I've found the proof. We aren't native to the fundament. Our ancient ancestors came here to hide. The place of stone we live on, our Osmium court, is one fragment of a rocky planet that crashed into the fundament and broke apart. All the other nearby continents, the helium drinkers, the bone plaza, the star cutters, came from the same world. Perhaps the other races of the fundament are migrants too. We live on the shrapnel of our home world, floating in an ocean deep inside a gas giant. That's what fundament must be a titanic gas planet. The endless storm above us must be but one layer of the atmosphere and the sea we float on. There's more down beneath it. So much more. You understand what this means, Sathona. The timid truth is a lie. We aren't meant to be the world's prey. We weren't born to live and die in the dark. We have a better destiny. Tell our father, Sister Sathona, this is the proof of his life's work. With love, for your second birthday, your first surviving sister, Orash. Predators and Menaces, carved to endure by Shiro, third surviving sister of the Osmium King's last brood. A Stormjoy. A storm joy is a living cloud. When it passes over our continent, it lowers its feeding tentacles. On each tentacle are the bait stars. Although the light makes you happy, you must avoid it. You will be eaten. A storm joy is a good way for an old person to choose death. Also, a daring knight can cut the bait stars from the tentacles. I have six. Falling. If you fall off the edge of the continent, you will die in the ocean. This is a special hazard when our father, the Osmium King, uses the engines. Helium drinkers. The currents of the Fundament Ocean bring us near other continents. The Helium Court is near us now. They are of our species, but they are our enemies. Their knights raid us every day. Helium drinkers have two legs, two arms and three eyes just like us but they are bright evil i want to be a knight and fight them the helium drinker ambassador ate 10 of my sisters as tribute this is normal however i resent it mothers mothers can fly they live much longer than 10 years mothers are extremely smart and they will guard their spawn if you try to tamper with the eggs, they will eat you. Sothona wants to eat the jelly and become a mother when she turns four. Storms. 
The rain is often poisonous. Sometimes it dissolves flesh. When lightning misses the lightning farm, it can vaporize a person. The entire world is deadly to us. Mysteries. The fundament is very large. We are the smallest things in it. If you don't understand something, it will probably kill you. My teacher, Teox, says this is why we have such short lives, so we can breed and adapt quickly. Moon waves. My sister Orash is afraid of moon waves. When she gets back from her expedition to the tungsten monoliths, I will ask her why. For the consideration of the helium court, written in desperation, this sealed secret. I am Teox, sterile mother teacher to the children of the Osmian throne. As a mother, I live long. As a neuter, I can rise above the small battles of court politics. I alone see the patterns of survival. Alone, I designed the great engines that move the Osmium court. Now, alone, I must act to save my kingdom. Salinity has claimed my lord, the Osmium King. He is ten and mad. The study of ancient text consumes him. Today he raves about the moons above the storm. Tomorrow he will wander the halls, speaking to his familiar, a dead white worm from the deep sea. He keeps it in glass, and he tends to it, and he neglects to the duties of a king. The Osmium King has three surviving heirs, each two years old. Shiro, the youngest and bravest, who wants to be a knight. Sathona, most clever, who wants to be a mother. Orash, navigator child, who dreams of the infinite ocean. Tomorrow she will return from the tungsten monoliths. None of these are suitable heirs. None of them will protect the Yasmium court from the howling fundament. Shiro can fight, but she cannot lead. Sathona can think, but she cannot fight. Orash's curiosity will draw her away from duty. I fear for all future children. Soon, the Osmium King will lock himself into the royal orrery to study the moons. Gather your knights, O oh helium drinkers, and invade our continent. Kill the three heirs. I will rule the Osmium Court as your regent and build engines for you. And if I fail, let the Leviathan in the deep eat me. Written in grief, this hateful request. Teox, Osmium Mother, neutered to watch. And that is all we will be going over with this episode, guys. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hit that bell icon for notifications. Check out all the socials in the description box below. And we will see you all next time. Have a great night, everybody. Bye!